Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to another episode of Cycling Insider. In this episode, let's talk about a superbike from Giant, and it's gonna be the 2021 Giant Propel Advanced Pro Zero Disc. Oh yes, it's a mouthful of bike names for this uh, Giant model, but make no mistake, it is a proper superbike uh, from Giant. But before we start, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that little bell icon, because it's gonna help in growing the channel. And of course, if you are already a subscriber, then thank you. So, let's talk about this uh, giant propel. We can kick off with the retail price for this uh, bike. So the retail price in UK is 5,700 British pounds, or for example, if you are in the continental Europe, it's gonna be 5,400 euros. It seems to me that this uh, Propel Advanced uh, Pro Zero model you can't get in the USA. I'm guessing you would need to speak with your local giant bike dealers in the US to make you a specific order for this uh, bike. So considering the retail price of this bike, it's an eye-watering price, it's an expensive bike, there is no other way around it. and I truly suggest you to negotiate the price of this bike so be nice negotiate nicely behave nicely and definitely aim for about 15 percent discount on this uh, bike now let's answer the question who is this uh, bike for so you see a giant propel platform is a proper aero super bike aerodynamically optimized frame and the fork and some other components and also low drag on this bike and if you are interested in going as fast as possible in a straight line then definitely you should consider giant propel platform also keep in mind that this uh, aero superbike it's not gonna be the lightest or the stiffest because this is not the point the point is low drag and aerodynamically optimized uh, bike also, when we talk about the paint scheme on this bike, as I see here, uh, for the UK market and the European market, there is only one paint scheme available. And this is this uh, beautiful metallic blue with a hint of black, pretty classical paint scheme combination, and I would have no problems, uh, of course, getting this paint scheme, but on these price levels, so... 5,700 British pounds or approximately 5,400 euros, I truly believe that Giant should have offered at least another paint scheme. It's a very expensive bike and definitely two paint scheme options would be nice. So this is a little bit of critique from me about the paint scheme choices for this uh, bike. So now let's dive in, let's see the specifications of this bike and let's see what do you get for your hard-earned money. And of course, I will give some of my uh, pros and cons for all the specifications and components on this uh, bike. We can kick off with the frame and the fork on this bike. So you see, you will get a carbon fiber frame and the fork from Giant, and this is their advanced grade composite, both for the frame and the fork. Also with the fork, it's a full composite overdrive steerer, and also keep in mind that frame and fork are ready for the 12 mm true axles, <clears throat> internal cable routing, and uh, direct mount uh, disc uh, brakes. This uh, carbon fiber frame and the fork is not top of the line creme de la creme, what a giant can do. They have their top of the line SL range, so this would be second in the line considering the most advanced carbon fiber frames and forks that the Giant can produce. But again, make no mistake, this is a superb product from Giant and you are getting a lifetime warranty on this carbon fiber frame and 10 years warranty on this uh, carbon fiber fork. Also keep in mind that <clears throat> Giant is one of the biggest my manu bike manufacturers in the world 
based in Taiwan, they control the whole production of carbon fiber <clears throat> frames in the forks. Everything from the raw fiber to the finished product, which I absolutely think is great. And they are one of the rare bike manufacturers in the world who can control the whole production. So top-notch carbon fiber frame in the fork, absolutely no complaints from me here. Now let's talk about some of the smaller pieces, like the handlebar stem seat post. We can kick off with the handlebar. So this is the Giant's own contact SLR aero uh, handlebars. So these SLR aero handlebars are a carbon fiber piece, superb piece from Giant. And what I'm really glad here is that you see handlebars and the stem are separated. So the stem is Giant's own contact SL aero. So this is an aluminum piece and the handlebar is the carbon fiber piece. But just because these two <clears throat> components are separated, you will definitely have enough opportunities to fine tune your position. So that's a great, great addition from a Giant. Speaking about the seat post, again, <clears throat> carbon fiber seat post from Giant, Giant Vector. Again, superb choice because a carbon fiber seat post will definitely soak up uh, some of the smaller uh, road bumps. So handlebar stem seat post, absolutely no complaints here from me. Saddle on this bike is the Giant's own production, Giant Fleet SL. <clears throat> I have no experience with this Giant Fleet SL saddle. And if anybody has any experience, please do let us know in the comments below. But generally speaking, saddles are a personal preference. And once when you find your desired saddle, please do keep it as long as possible and fit it to any bike that you can. Now let's talk about the group set on this bike, the drivetrain and the group set. So shifters, front mech and the rear mech, you will get a superb Shimano Ultegra DI2 electronic group set, 11 speed electronic group set, absolutely top notch, uh, best value for money electronic group sets on the market and I absolutely have no complaints for this Shimano Ultegra DI2 uh, group set. Here I'm not sure. Uh, is the rear mech on this group set, is it a short cage or a medium cage, because this might limit uh, the size of the cassette you can use. So this is something that you can check with your local giant bike dealer. Just keep in mind, if it's a short cage mech, then the 1130 cassette is going to be the biggest cassette you can fit with this rear mech. Speaking about the cassette, so the cassette on this bike is the Shimano's Ultegra cassette. 1130 cassette and you see this cassette is paired with the KMC X11 SL1 chain superb choice for the chain I have no complaints here cassette again superb choice 1130 and also the crankset on the bike is the Shimano Zultegra crankset and this crankset is the <coughs> I'm sorry 3652 crankset and it comes with the Giants own power meter power meter pro Again, superb addition, this power meter and a superb crankset. Uh, just also check one thing with your local giant bike dealer. Is this power meter a double-sided power meter or single-sided? I truly believe it's a double-sided power meter, but just please do check this little detail. So you see 5236 crankset, which is paired with the 1130 cassette. This definitely tells you it's a proper aero superbike. It's not designed, you know, for attacking some really, really steep mountains. If you wanted to attack some steep mountains, you would probably have to mount 1132 or 1134 cassette on this uh, bike. Now let's talk about the braking performance. You see, you will get, uh, again, superb Shimano Ultegra hydraulic disc brakes on this uh, bike. And now I had to quickly just double check these specifications on the, on the German website where they clearly say that the braking rotors are 160 millimeters front, 140 millimeters back. And these braking rotors are Shimano's Ultegra level braking rotors, Shimano's Ultegra RT800, which is superb. But the thing that bothers me here is this braking rotor at the rear which is only 140 millimeters. This is a very fast bike and I truly believe that they should have fitted the 160 millimeter braking rotor at the back. So Giant, please please uh, do 
correct this uh, little mistake in my opinion in the future models of the giant propel it should be 160 millimeters braking rotors both front and the back just because it's going to give you so much better uh, braking performance and heat dissipation now let's talk about the bottom bracket on this bike so you will get a shimano's press fit uh, bottom bracket i'm not expecting any creaking noises because this uh, carbon fiber frame from Giant should be a high quality product and it should fit perfectly around this press fit uh, bottom bracket. When you look at the wheel set on this bike, you will get a superb product from Giant. So, this is again Giant SLR1 carbon disc wheel set. And just keep in mind that at the front, it's going to be a 42 millimeter uh, rim height, but at the back, it's going to be a 65 millimeter rim height. So now when we look a bit closely into this SLR1, for example, 65 disc carbon wheel set, we can see a few key features. So it's a carbon fiber wheel set, which is of course the hookless giant technology. It is tubeless ready. And I'm guessing that out of the box, uh, giant will prepare this um, wheel set uh, to be tubeless ready. So they will include the tubeless tape and the valve on this uh, wheel set. Rim height at the back, as I was saying, is 65 millimeters. At the front, it is 42 millimeters, correct. And the inner rim width is 22.4 millimeters. Hubs on this wheel set are the Giant's own hub. Uh, the rear hub, which is interesting, has a ratchet driver with a 32. So I'm guessing Giant took some learnings from DT Swiss. And I'm expecting these hubs, low friction hubs, both front and the back, to be a superb quality from a Giant. Because they are with the sealed uh, cartridge bearings. And as I say, I think they took some learnings from the DT Swiss for the ratchet driver system. 12mm true axles front and the back. Spokes on these wheel sets are the Sapim CX Ray, 24 at the front, 24 at the back. And the total weight, uh, for example, for the pair of uh, this 65 millimeter carbon fiber wheels would be 1640 grams. So since now you have the front wheel, which is 42 millimeters, this is going to be a little bit less. So we can say roughly 1000, you know, 600 grams for a pair of this wheel set which is a very very competitive weight for a carbon fiber wheel set i don't have any complaints with this uh, carbon fiber wheel set from giant it should be a superb wheel set knowing how giant does a super quality carbon fiber pieces when we talk about the tires so this wheel set is wrapped in the giant's own kdex race 25 tires tubeless ready 25 mil tires and the um, only trick here is that as I see the maximum width possible, they say you can fit here is 26 millimeter tires. So this will definitely uh, limit your future choices of uh, tire, of course, widths. And I wish that uh, you could fit a 28 millimeter tire in this uh, frame, just because you would get so much more air volume and so much more smoother ride. So this would be something interesting to check with the giant the bike dealer. Can you fit a 28 millimeter tire for the future? I have a kind of sneaky suspicion that you could fit a 28 millimeter tire. And uh, when it comes to these tires and the giant's famous uh, hookless rim technology, there's a lots of confusion which tires you can use or you can't use. Some of them have been tested by giant and giant has confirmed you can use them. So I will leave uh, all the links in the video description. You can read a bit more, but just keep in mind this, that if you choose a tubeless tire, which can go on these hookless rims. And if you want to run it on the pressures above five bar or above 72.5 PSI, you will basically be doing it on your own risk if this tire is not on the list of giant approved tires. On the other hand, if you are running a tire, you know, hookless uh, comparable tubeless comparable tire, on this rim below five bars, then basically you can run any tire as you want. So as I say, I will leave this uh, link in the video description so you can read a bit more, but also keep in mind that Giant is constantly testing many, many tires and adding them to this uh, list. 
Now when we talk about the whole weight of this bike, it is 7.8 kilograms for the size medium. So for example, I would need uh, definitely a size medium large or even large. So let's say we add another 300 grams on top of it. So out of the box, this would be 8.1 kilograms bike in size large, which I consider that it's a great bike weight, very competitive with all the other offerings on the market. And you can't expect a super light bike uh, when it's a proper aero optimized, aerodynamically optimized bike. So in a summary, I will just now focus on the few uh, points on this bike that I think Giant should change. The first point is of course the paint scheme choice. Giant should definitely offer at least two paint scheme choices for such an expensive bike. And the second thing I would mention is that this rear braking rotor, which is only 140 millimeters, should be immediately replaced by Giant and they should fit a 160 millimeter braking rotor at the back. This is a super fast bike. You need a lot of braking power and you need a good heat dissipation on the back. Except from that, I absolutely have no other complaints about this bike. It's a superb aero bike. It's a, it's a super bike basically from Giant and the price, the retail price of 5,700 British pounds or 5,400 euros definitely reflects that. So I think this is gonna be it for today. If you like what I'm doing, please do subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you're always notified when I make a new video. And as always, I will see you soon in the next episode. Pura vida!